Wonder Women, welcome back. Um, first of all, before we begin, I would like to thank everyone for all your kind words about our special episode last week. I didn't expect to receive so many messages about that. Um, it's always nice to see others relate to a struggle you think that's like something only you face. Then it turns out you have this whole community who also feel the same way. So I wrote that. Um, you know, I wrote I wrote that as a blog post called "The Good Girl Myth" uh, four years ago. Because back then I felt like I was still a girl, and I wrote that as a disillusioned young woman who tried and did her best to do everything by the book, and still somehow ended up really disappointed and hurt, and asking. Um, what what am I doing wrong or is this how I'm supposed to live but praise God four years later um, I I can on- honestly say I don't feel as disillusioned as that girl anymore praise God because he has brought me this far and when I s- started prioritizing what the Lord thought of me when I when that's what I put at the top of my head more than what other people expect of me or think of me then it gives me so much freedom to dream or to just create or to just enjoy being loved by God so thank you so much and uh, if you haven't seen it you can watch it I will link it here you can watch it it's called the good woman myth because that being a good woman that's a myth no one's no one is a good woman but we can be Christ-like women um, so how are you uh, today, I will be sharing some stories that are really personal to me. So I hope that um, you will be inspired by them. Not because it's such an amazing story that happened to me, but because we have this amazing God working in us and through us every day in our lives. Um, let me share something about myself before I begin. Um, if there's something to know about me, is that I love organizing my life. I am messy in other aspects. My closet is a mess. Um, my desk at home, whenever from home, it's a mess. But for the bigger things, I am really organized. My life is in Google Sheets and in an app I love called Notion. This is not sponsored, but I love Notion. You, you should try it. Uh, I love organizing my life and seeing everything there. And I have a sheet, a Google sheet called Krija's Money Tracker. <laughs> and that's where I put all my income, all my expenses. I used to, I used to rely on paper planners. Um, I am one of the, those people who collect stickers from coffee shops at the end of the year just to get a planner. And at one point I even made my own layout because none of the planners that exist seem to fit my very, very full life. So at one point, I did my own layout and printed it. But somehow, I also outgrew that planner. So now it's all digital and all online. And in my Google Sheet that tracks my money, um, there I can see all my bills and my savings and my due dates that are coming up. And somehow it's less painful. <laughs> it's less painful to pay for the bills when they're color coded and pretty with all the fonts. Um, I highly recommend it if you don't do it yet. Um, but yeah, kidding aside, it's not always fun to deal with the expenses, to match the bills to the expenses. Uh, because uh, most of the time, uh, there's not much left at the end of the day or if there's there's something left There's another bill that comes and I guess that's the purpose of money, right? It's to be spent for your needs But whenever I am tempted to complain about all the things I have to pay for or to Start spiraling when I feel like I am not making enough for me and my family not just for myself, but also for my family. Um, the Lord gives me a very, very strong conviction not to complain. And then this flashback reel plays in my mind 
of how far I've come now that I have this ability to pay for our needs. He reminds me of the past and I would like to share some of that with you today in relation also to the Wonder, Wonder Woman that we're studying today. Um, join me in looking back. So when I was a kid, I lived a pretty comfortable life. We were not really rich in the sense this, in the sense that we see on TV, we didn't really have a car. We didn't own our own house. When I was a kid, we just rented because our house is in Kalaokan City. I'm in Cebu City. But it was a comfortable life. Uh, we would go to the mall on weekends. Um, we had good Christmas gifts. We studied in our private school. God, God is good. Our, we had a business. When I was a kid, it was an export business. We exported bags and jewelry all over the world. So that's, that's a good business. And my mom also had a full-time job. She was a manager in a restaurant here in Cebu. So life was pretty good when I was a kid. But uh, I was 11 when the U.S. recession happened. If you're not familiar with the U.S. recession, um, in 2007, their stock market crashed. There's so much more happening behind that small definition, but a recession happens when a country's economy dwindles and there's an economic decline. And oftentimes, it's a very sharp economic decline. And we were greatly affected by that because the clients we served in our export business were from the United States. So all of them were gone, not just us, the whole furniture industry and export industry in the in Cebu City struggled. Um, I watched my parents scramble to recover and readjust because it's like our source of living was pulled out from under us almost with no warning. So despite the best efforts of my parents, now that I'm an adult, I see that and I'm amazed by their resilience and their hard work. But despite their best efforts, our lifestyle had to change drastically. And I watched my family move from a nice two-bedroom house with a big front yard where I used to run around as, at, as a kid. We used to take care of so many flowers. We had a garden. We moved from that to a small one-bedroom apartment to a studio apartment with me, my brother, and my mom, then to a bed spacer room type. It was a downgrade. And it was very palpable for me as a growing teenager. Like, I was about to be a teenager when that happened. When I now view that part of our life, I view it with new eyes. I feel so much for my mother. It must have been so hard for her. Hi, mommy, if you're watching. Um, me and my brother, we had high school to distract us from the reality of it all. We still went to school. Um, even though my mom didn't have a job, I don't know how she did it. She is a wonder woman. But she bore the full responsibility of uh, raising two teenage kids in a private school. A private school we cannot leave because we have an outstanding balance. <laughs> so we just stayed there until we graduated. I have so many stories from these years. Like, stories of making 500 pesos fit span of few days. Or some are funny, some are heartbreaking. Um, there was a time that it took me and my brother like a whole week to save up for Mother's Day so we can buy our mom a fudgy bar, <laughs> you know that? <laughs> a fudgy bar and we put some nips on top of it. It took us a whole week to save and then my mom didn't eat it so we were so hurt. So we were crying while eating it. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> but those years were hard in our very young, young eyes. We didn't really realize the full extent of that. Um, God is good though, like, it feels so far behind us already these days, 
in God's own working and in His own time, He has provided for us to go to college, colleges we cannot afford, even if we dreamt really big. We not each of, all of us now at home have jobs. We all contribute to our, all our bills, and it's it's an amazing turnaround. And I bet by looking at me when you're watching, maybe you don't expect that I have that part in my life. Like that's a story that happened to me and my family. But it's a reality, and it's not always easy to talk about money struggles or poverty. It's not exactly conversation with friends it's not exactly social media material in fact it's the opposite on social media it's like you flaunt what you have it's hard to come out there and admit that you really don't have anything you, you it's shameful it's it makes you feel helpless um it's hard even to ask for help when you have nothing really but for me one of the biggest um, effects of poverty on a person is that it robs you of ability to dream because why would you dream big if you're still worrying about your next meal or where to get that how can you dream big if you have to spend your energy on finding money for the bills you have to pay that's a reality i saw back then it was so hard to dream but somehow we did um, we have this energy at home right now that we will really try hard not to go back to that life anymore. We all are working hard to just not go back there. It's like this secret, I don't know, fear or drive in all of us because we know how hard that was. And even looking towards the future, I don't want my kids to go through what I went through. But... Poverty is an, it's like a looming threat. And I'm sure not just to me. Maybe some women watching here, you're also worrying about your bills or facing a big uh, financial struggle. I'm still young. I still don't, I'm sure I still don't know the full brunt of it. Especially those facing like house loans. Like how do you do that? That's, that's a lot to bear. Or your children's education in the future. But... I do, I do remember those days when we had nothing and now I get to put it all in a Google Sheet and balance and calculate. I have this, this little sense of security that I love so much. I praise God for it because He gave that to us. He is not just a provider, He is a redeemer too. Like He redeems the things that have been destroyed by poverty in the past. So... Praise God. Praise God that the birthday celebrations before in the food court <laughs> have evolved. That's also another funny story that I'll share some other time. All throughout that, I know that God was looking at me and my family. His eye was on us. Never once did we leave His sight. And that's important to think of when we're facing our money troubles because one of the most um, powerful things to remove our faith is like money struggles it's very real it's very threatening but when we know that God is looking at us all throughout that it gives us strength and hope and drive to continue and to persevere let's look at our Wonder Woman today she is somebody who also is living in this world of hardship and poverty. And somehow, Jesus makes a prime example out of her and her faith. The Bible does not tell us her name, um, but Jesus knows her, knows her heart. She saw him, uh, he saw her in a crowd of people. And let's read this story straight from the Bible. Let's read from Mark chapter 12. Let's start in verse 38. Because there's a picture I want to paint here. So, verse 38. As he thought, Jesus said, Watch out for the teachers of the law. 
They like to walk around in flowing robes and be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and have the most important seats in the synagogue and the place of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for show make lengthy prayers. These men will be punished most severely. Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They, gave, they all gave out of their wealth, but she out of her poverty put in everything, all she had to live on. Wow. I included the previous verses because before Jesus called attention to this woman with this great act of faith, he was warning the disciples about these men who called themselves teachers of the law. Um, they like to puff themselves up with honor and respect, but they devour with those houses. So it gives us this idea that this widow was a victim of a systemic um, injustice, that somehow this her situation is truly truly out of her control she's a victim of a systemic injustice that even to this day a lot of poverty is caused by that but it's amazing that in this crowd of people who had way way more to give with their ostentatious you know this place of wealth giving so much money to the temple's treasury the one person jesus looks at and honors is this poor widow who dropped in two small copper coins barely worth anything and that's what Jesus honored the Lord Jesus saw her really really saw her not just saw her with his eyes but when he saw this woman he saw her circumstance that she's a widow she lost her husband there's no one to provide for her in their culture as all we also mentioned in our previous episode about Ruth, widows really have a hard time in society because their husbands were their providers. And now that the husbands are gone, they cannot really make a living for themselves. So this woman and her last two coins really tugged at the heart of Jesus. Jesus saw her heart that... Her, this small offering that she gave, two copper coins, it seemed inconsequential if you put it at, at the backdrop of all the wealth that is being, giving at the, be, being given at the same time. But Jesus knew that it was an act of faith. It was not just an act of display of wealth. It was not, she didn't give it to puff up, puff up her soul that, I'm so generous, I give to the Lord, but she did it because it's the last thing she had and she thought to give it to the Lord because that's where it belongs. Now, what can we learn in all our money struggles? What can we learn from this widow with the two coins? First, it, giving is an act of faith. It really is an act of faith. When you give the last of your resources to the Lord, it shows that you trust Him to keep providing for your needs. It shows that you believe that God will take better care of you than you can ever take care of yourself. And make no mistake, sometimes this desire for security, especially financial security, it can be an idol sometimes. Um, it can consume your mind. And we acknowledge that it comes out of fear and trauma sometimes. I have that too. But if we make that our God, if we worship the idea of financial security, the Lord is not honored by that because He is supposed to be worshipped. This woman, sometimes no, God has to draw us to nothingness and really empty us so that we really 
because that's what it takes for us to acknowledge him as the Lord who will take care of our lives. Money will not take care of you the same way God does. So we should not magnify money over God. Giving is an act of faith in that regard because you acknowledge that this two coins that I have, it can feed me, but I can also use this to show God that I know He will feed me. You see, giving is an act of faith. Another thing we can learn from her is that our struggles are not invisible to the Lord. I know it can feel that way sometimes. When I'm computing my bills late at night in the glow of my laptop, no one else sees that. When I cry over expenses, no one sees that, but God sees it. God sees you worrying about that hospital bill. You're not alone. God sees you worrying about the tuition of your children or the state of your business because you're supporting hundreds of families through your employees. God sees that. We, His children, we are not invisible to the Lord. Just like this woman who Jesus saw in a crowd. It, seem, it seems like when other people are, are succeeding, especially financially, especially when wicked people are succeeding there, it can make us feel like, why is the Lord's favor on them, not on me? I'm poor, I'm needy. Why does the Lord keep blessing the same group of people, the 1%? Maybe you ask that. That is farther from the truth. The Bible tells us over and over again, especially in the Old Testament, that God's heart is close to the poor and needy. And it makes so much sense that this loving God who owns everything, He is the owner of everything, and He has this heart of love towards His people, of course His inclination would be to provide for the needs of His people, right? So He sees us. When you experience great lack, you might think that the Lord has left you or is not paying attention to you, but friend, that's not true at all. He is, his eye is on you, just, just like his eye is on the sparrow. His eye is on you. Just by knowing that God sees you and is ready to provide for you any second, that should encourage your heart to not give up, to just press on and keep praying. The third lesson we can learn from this widow is that God's economy works differently. Again, God's economy works differently. Take this to heart, okay, that when we offer things to God, it's not about the amount or how big it is or how ostentatious it is. He doesn't care about the amount or the size of the offering. What he cares about is the size of the giver's heart, which is why Jesus Acknowledge her over the other donors with deeper pockets. Jesus cares about your disposition when you give, your heart when you give. So is it right to think that the Lord is more honored when I give my last 100 pesos with so much joy and faith rather than when I give 1 million with a grumbling heart? Yep, that's how it works. God's economy works differently. He is not impressed by the size or the amount because he is the lord of everything he doesn't really need it the point of giving is to show our faith and trust in him the lord's books are an endless endless resource that we can tap into as his children he is not bothered by financial insecurity because he is such a rich god so knowing that knowing how god's economy work it should encourage our heart to really be faithful to just do these acts of faith especially in giving and it will really glorify him as our lord when we offer sacrificially, you know, we mirror God's own love for us because that's how He loves us. It's very, very sacrificial. I like to think that what the widow did at that point in Jesus' life, it really blessed the heart of the Lord. I like to think that. Why? 
because that woman, with her last two coins, she gave the Lord through the temple everything she had to live on. A few weeks from this encounter, Jesus himself will give his whole life on the cross. Jesus understood what it meant to her because he was going to do the same. He will give his life up for that widow, for you and for me. And the cost is so big, but he did it anyway. Because it's a display of his love for you and me. Whatever we give to the Lord, not just money, but our time, our skill, our trust, when we give that to the, to the Lord, it should, it should be founded on this knowledge that we have that the Lord loves us. And at one point in time, He gave His whole life for us so that He can call us His children. When we think about that, everything else that we have to give seems like a very, very small offering. God Himself initiated the giving. God Himself gave us an example. Nothing else in our life is too big or too small to offer to the Lord. One thing that's for sure, when you follow God, when you follow Jesus and you make Him your Savior, it does not promise you a fat bank account. I have been following Jesus for nine years now, going ten. The first, let me count. The first like five or six years of that following Jesus, I still spent that in poverty. So those first five years of me following Jesus, nothing really changed much. There were slow changes and blessings along the way. But when I accepted him, it didn't mean that there's lots of money transferred in my bank account. Because it doesn't work that way. It doesn't even promise us that it will, we will never experience poverty ever again. Who knows what will happen in the future. But what it does promise is that He will never leave us or forsake us if that happens. He will never leave you or me to our own devices. The great thing about following Jesus is we have a Lord now who takes care of us. And my day-to-day living, my daily bread, if you will, is not up to me. It's up to the Lord. That takes this big burden off my shoulder. If I just trust God to do what He says He will do, then I'll be alright. The same goes for you. He is our provider. He will always provide for us. Before we end, um, I would like to turn to the words of Jesus Christ Himself in Matthew 6. And I hope this encourages you as much as it always, always encourages me. Matthew 6, verses 25 onwards, let's read. Jesus said, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his glory and splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Friend, is there an area of your life right now that feels empty or impoverished? Is it your finances? Or maybe it's a feeling of poverty in your social life? Do you feel disconnected from your friends? Is it a poverty of love? You don't feel loved as much as you did before. A poverty of opportunities. You're looking for opportunities for a better life, but 
if they all feel so far away from you? Are you worried about your future? I encourage you to read and reread the words of Jesus in Matthew 6, which we just read. I encourage you to talk to the Lord about all of your needs and requests like a daughter requesting lovingly from her really, really, really good father. And more often than not, when you do that, the Lord will, exp will invite you to express your trust in Him. The Lord will ask you to do something that really shows that you trust Him. There's an act of faith required most of the time. Is He asking you to offer something in time of need? Is He asking you to give something up so you can have more of Him? That's something that only you and God will figure out and answer together. It's really a relationship between the two of you. But what act of faith is waiting to be done for you to express that you truly trust the Lord? Spend time with the Lord in prayer and figure out your dynamic together. The Lord wants to walk with you in your journey of life. Not only walk with you, but provide you and guide you and be there for you. Whatever you may lack right now, the Lord is with you. In my own experience, trusting the Lord is really worth it. It is. So I hope you don't hesitate. When He invites you to trust Him, say yes. Go ahead. Trust the Lord. If you feel like you have nothing now, what more can you lose, right? If you just trust the Lord more. Let's put everything we have in the hands of our God because He knows how to multiply it, how to take care of it. He knows how to safe keep whatever we put in His hands. So offer everything you have to the Lord. And do it with so much joy and gratefulness in your heart. Not grumbling because God looks at the heart of givers. Do it with joy and watch yourself be covered in His peace. Knowing you did the right thing in trusting the Lord. He will provide for your needs, friend. So trust Him. Don't worry. Just trust Him. I pray that starting today, you and I, will be women with generous hearts, not just to the people around us, but generous to the Lord. Generous in giving our time, our resources, our whole life to the Lord. Just like the widow back in Jesus' day. I would love to pray for you right now. If you have specific prayer requests, you can message me personally. You'll find me in the comment section of this video. You can also leave a comment so that other women can also pray for you but i love connecting with all of you who are watching wonder women so go ahead and comment but right now i would love to pray for you so please pray with me let's pray our heavenly father we know that you are the source of all blessings god and we praise you father for bringing us this far in our lives providing for each single day providing not only our needs but even our wants and comforts in life we acknowledge lord that every good thing comes from you our father i pray lord that we will espouse the heart of the widow that jesus saw in the temple she gave the last of everything she owned expressing that she really trusts you lord to take care of her from that point on we would like to do the same father from this point on, we would love, we would love to express that we trust you. We trust that you will provide for every bill that needs to be paid. You will be the one to stock up our kitchens with food. You will take care of, for those with kids, you will take care of the education of their kids. You will take care of our health. You will take care of the hospital bills, everything. We know, Lord, that you are glorified when you provide for us because we praise you in return. When we are brought to nothingness, Lord, and you come up with your provision, you are glorified, Father. Show your glory to the women who are watching right now 
and I pray that you will just meet all of us, Lord, in our need. Show us, Father, Father, that it's really your work so that we can praise you, Father, and glorify your name. Cultivate a heart of generosity in us and allow us, Lord, to be generous towards you first and foremost, not withholding anything but giving you everything because we trust that you will just take care of it and give us what we need. Thank you, Lord. We acknowledge and trust that you are our provider and redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I pray you were encouraged. I pray that this week you will experience so many more blessings in your life. Not just financial, but in all aspects. For I pray that we will all be well-rounded women who love the Lord. And I'll see you again next week here on Wonder Women. Share this video with one of your favorite women in life. Bye!